Hey friends, so what's this all about? Well, Zach and I are leaving in just a few moments. In fact, as, as soon as we make sure we've got everything we need in these suitcases, we're gonna zip them up, we're gonna put them in the car, and we're gonna take off. So we are leaving soon. So where are we going? Well, we are going to Iowa. We're gonna be visiting our daughter, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our friends, our nieces and nephews. Oh my goodness, it is gonna be so much fun. But even with all that fun that I'm gonna be having, you are gonna be on my mind. I will miss you while we are gone. But the good thing is, is that since we've started this devotion together, even though we'll be miles apart from each other, you are going to be in my heart. And so I am going to look forward to doing these devotions with you every single day, even more so while I'm in Iowa. For now, let's get into our devotion. The title for today is Singing Stones. Oh my goodness, my friends. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. My very favorite, very, 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 very favorite passage of scripture is in this. Very favorite. I am so excited that we get to do this together right before we leave and head off to Iowa. Okay, let's get into this. The verse that we're going to read is, oh my gosh, friends, I'm so excited to share this with you. Okay, keep it together, Laura. Keep it together. Okay, the verse is Luke 19, verse 40. I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Now, that doesn't mean much yet. Hold on. After Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the Pharisees complained to him about the shouts and praise of his followers. Jesus replied that if his disciples were quiet on that day of triumph, the stones would cry out. That would have been something to hear. Now here's the thing, friends, I'm gonna deviate from this because the reason why that portion of scripture means so much to me is because of all that God has done for me, and I know he's done it for you too, but the reason why that, that portion of scripture is so important to me is because of what our God, our great and awesome God has done to redeem me there is no way that I will ever let a stone cry out for me. No way. If God's praises can be sang, and they can always be sang, there is not a single pebble, not a single rock that's gonna do that for me. I'm gonna do it myself. So those people who were being criticized by the Pharisees, I would have been one of them because there's no way a rock is gonna cry out for me. No way. And it's not like cry out. It's like, can you believe this? Like excited cry out. Okay, let's keep going. The author continues to say, yet day after day, the stones do cry out in praise. We who follow Jesus are living stones. Throughout Lent, we offer up our songs and prayers of repentance. We join the Palm Sunday crowds and sing out glad hosannas to the Son of David. We, as living stones, eagerly anticipate Easter morning, knowing that the great stone has been rolled away from Jesus' empty tomb. As living stones, we praise our mighty Savior, the stone that the builders rejected, who has become the cornerstone. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, our cornerstone, accept our thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, my friends, now here's our challenge. Find a smooth stone to display as a reminder that you are a living stone. And now the extra verses of scripture that you and I are going to read as soon as we press stop and oh my goodness, am I going to read, read, read it, is Luke 19, 28 through 40. I love you, my friends, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day. I know that I sure will. I've got a long drive ahead of me, but I'm going to be thinking about how we got to share this portion of scripture right here. I'm so happy. Bye, friends.